that's back very already. Facilitation. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, so Dominic. I think it's already back. Thank you, Dominic. Um, so who would you like to um yes, take um take the word and take the floor and add? I know some of the groups were were still in conversations. Um I think my group one, my group actually, we were about to to um have Lydia commenting on the conversation and and that was fascinating. We we're all like, oh, okay, let's let's see what Lydia is gonna bring up. Um, so that is one one thing that I am personally curious. So I wanted to just put out there, Lydia, if you feel inclined to bring that to the plenary. Uh, but I think from all of us in, in an invitation, right? Like open invitation to speak and share your thoughts and questions if you have any questions that you were not able to bring up in the plenary before. I see Kelly. Kelly, would you like to speak? Yes. Hi, thank you. Um, and thank you to all of the listeners. That was really a useful way um, of uh, finding out about the conversations that were happening in the other groups. Um, I, um, I was in the group with Jani and I thought um, this would be a good opportunity to expand on, I think, what Jani was expressing. And that is the fact that the group that I was in, um, I guess one of the uh, driving similarities uh, or um, uh, common denominator around our conversation was around tension the tension between uh, this space, um, attention to inclusion that Jenny was describing and a more critical approach to thinking about um, structured data and uh, uh, what one of the members of the group called a, a dystopian perspective on that idea of visualizing 2040 and what was possible in the, um, in the kind of realities of the world that we're living uh, with the um, hegemonic power structures and um, um, uh, asymmetrical uh, imbalances of power. Um, and um, one of the things, so, so I think one of the things that um, I often think about is whether we have a shared understanding of decolonization and what that means. Um, uh, and I'll use a um, example that I shared in my group, um, which is the, um, um, the scholar and theorist spoke about decolonization as the, um, the end of the world, meaning the end of the orders of the world as we understand it. Um, and so what are the possibilities of um, structured data, whether that be Wikidata or other applications of, of structured data? What are the possibilities of that to aid us to um, disorder our world, so to disorder our colonial world, to create new ways of knowing, new ways of understanding our world. And um, the bit that our group cut off on, which it, uh, that Lydia was about to expand on, is the um, the ways that Wikidata isn't being used by the community that use Wikidata. So we had uh, a, a brief but useful um, reflection on the possibilities of multivocality, the possibilities of different worldviews being represented on or not being represented on Wikidata, and why the community that uses Wikidata and Lydia brought into the conversation, the community that reuses Wikidata, why there is a, a, a discomfort, a, um, a perhaps a, um, um, a, a lack of uh, willingness to engage with the idea that there can be multiple ways in which um, knowledge and knowing is expressed um, on Wikidata. And currently it's a very, um, it, currently um, it's reflective of, um, a, a, unsurprisingly to all of us here in the room, reflective of a, um, a very Western way of understanding um, how knowledge could be structured. And I'll leave it there, thank you.
Thank you, Kelly. And I see Lydia has the hands up. Yeah, uh, I can add a bit to what Kelly said, um, because exactly like Wikidata and the software underneath it, Wikibase is, is definitely not perfect, but there's so much opportunity there that currently isn't being exploited and that I think should be more exploited. And um, I at least do not yet understand why that is the case. Uh, I have many um, ideas, um, but we don't we don't know for sure. And it's probably um, a multitude of factors that uh, go into that. And, and then representing that data in Wikidata or any other structured data system is just one part, right? Um, because if we want that data to have an impact and, and, and get to people, then the applications being built on top of that data also need to work with that data and that complexity in that data. And that is a challenge. Um, and that requires effort um, on the part of the people building those tools, building those applications, building those services um, to make use of that. And yeah, that is also not always easy for us to strike that uh, balance. Yeah. Anyone would like to jump in? Just scanning the pages to see if there's any more uh, hands. You can just unmute yourself and start speaking. Well, I was just typing a note uh, about an under-recognized aspect of Wikidata, I think, which is its lexical layer, the so-called lexeme features of Wikidata, which are uh, already in production and usable, uh, but that could go uh, a little further in maturation and in tooling. But once it is mature and properly tooled, it could be uh, absolutely revolutionary in enabling uh, a variety of tools like uh, assisted translation, facilitated reading, facilitated dialogue with a, a, a truly, finally, context sensitive, um, rather than just plain statistical analysis approach to uh, interlanguage mediation. And just like Wikidata has, has arrived and everybody recognizes it as a mainstay of structured data, uh, warts and all, uh, I think Lexeme hasn't arrived yet, but once it does arrive, uh, will we'll like, likewise be a, a very important central place for reducing or combating the language barrier. Thank you, Asaf. I think maybe Saeed is answering to you. Saeed, would you like to bring that to voice? Yeah, apologies, I was just turning everything on. Um, no yeah, so, um, I mean, that's an, that's an extremely interesting and important development, but as, as usual, I, I'm, and I'm somewhat of a one trick pony on this. Um, I wanna think about it in terms of differential access, differential control, differential ownership, differential possibilities for use, et cetera. In other words, um, that these tools become available, but who is able to tool up given these asymmetric uh, spaces? Yeah, I think this has absolutely no bearing on core access issues, right? People without internet access will continue to not have access to Lexing, just like they don't have access to Wikidata and other resources. It's just completely orthogonal to the basic access problem. Hello? Hello, Sadiq. Yes, um, all right. Thank you so Hello. much, and uh, Lydia, for your um, contributions on Wikidata and some of the things that you shared about Wikidata and Lexings. Um, I'm really interested in Wikidata, uh, and I think Asap 
is one of the people who has really inspired me to develop interest in Wikidata. Um, I discovered Wikidata, I think, a um, few years ago at the Wiki in Daba in Ghana. And then after that, Wiki, um, ASAP visited uh, the community in Ghana and had some series of trainings with us. And, and it was really inspiring. And that was how I developed my interest in Wikidata. I do not really contribute huge data to Wikidata, but I look at the uh, opportunities Wikidata provides to uh, communities like ours. And I also uh, realized that a lot of people from um, Africa do not yet um, have um, so much interest in Wikidata as compared to other um, communities. And I don't know what exactly the challenge is, but I think it's one of the uh, projects that we should be, um, people from our communities should be really interested in. And I would kindly, um, uh, um, request or maybe if there's other ways we can get um, more communities involved, especially the user groups in Africa. I see a lot of opportunities um, within the Wikidata projects, um, like seems I discovered recently, and uh, we were fortunate to be to have been selected as one of the focus languages for the abstract Wikipedia project, thanks to the Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, I also follow um, Wikibase um, group and through that I've been able to learn so many things about Wikidata and how um, we can utilize the platform to improve the visibility of Dagbani language for a very new language like Dagbani, uh, which just came from the incubator um, a couple of months ago. We are already like, um, you know, creating content and adding um, labels and descriptions in Dagbani on Wikidata. And it's one of our key um, areas. It's one of the areas that we really want to focus on as a new language because other languages um, have different um, areas that they really um, show interest in. But we find out, we, we realize that Wikidata is uh, a place for especially new languages and because of the tools that support Wikidata and how Wikidata can help us um, create con more content. For example, um, we started adding, we have started adding um, data boxes to be able to generate um, info boxes and improve um, the quality of articles on uh, Dagbani, Wikipedia. So um, um, what I would say is for languages, when it comes to language digitization, I think Wikidata is one of the uh, places, especially indigenous languages that people can use to improve uh, the visibility of their language on the internet. Um, working with um, indigenous communities, I think um, people need um, a, a little education with regards to how they can contribute to Wikidata, uh, unlike Wikipedia, where most of us um, know, like, um, because it's an encyclopedia, a lot of people know much about Wikidata in Africa than uh, Wikipedia in Africa than Wikidata. So how do we develop the interest of people, especially the smaller language wikis or um, uh, underrepresented communities who are less interested in Wikidata? That's where my interest is. And for lexicographical data, I think it's one of the things that um, we can also um, use as a language the Dagbani language to grow uh, uh, the platform, especially the Dagbani Wikipedia. So that's all I have to say for now. I'm really uh, in, uh, excited about the whole conversation. I'm learning so much from um, the submissions from uh, all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadiq. And thank you for bringing a lot of the practical aspects. And we are nearing the end of our time together. Um, and um, as we, we are still in plenary and there's still uh, time, if you want to add your thoughts, but I wanted to just add here, uh, if you can speak to what you would you like, um, right, the next steps to be for this conversation and for this group, right? Do you have any expectation or imagination of how we take this conversation forward? Um, if you would like to be with a version or different versions of this group again, uh, so we would love to hear then that, right? Like the, the thinking and imagining for next steps. Um, and I see Toma has um, hand raised. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, 
uh, indeed, um, as part of uh, my work as a uh, Trudem Wallap, as uh, a biohacker, we are part of the RG uh, internship program. And uh, one thing we are working on is how to collect uh, relevant data to be used uh, for artificial intelligence uh, so that we can set up uh, a program or algorithm uh, using our data. And uh, one, thing I'm th one thing I'm thinking right now is how, or uh, I think it can be a great idea to see how we can use Wikidata uh, to collect uh, uh, source data or how I can ask the intern to work on this possibility. So uh, it's just uh, an idea blowing in my mind because you know, in artificial intelligence and uh, data also there is a lot of, uh, of bias related to data that we are using because sometimes databases are not uh, part of, uh, uh, databases are not really containing data coming from our context. So uh, um, I think that is the next step I'm going to, uh, to think about with uh, Wikidata and the Mbola. Thanks. Thank you, Tama. Anyone else, uh, maybe our last contribution with voice, and you can, of course, use the chat if you have ideas for next step on this conversation and also for this group, um, ways that we can still be together and engaged. Um, so if you want to add that to the chat, um, please do so. And any anyone else, would you like to add with voice? Maybe one, one more. And if I'm looking at the hands, I don't see anyone there. So then I think we can move on to just then overall um, uh, closing the conversation. And for this closing, I would like to actually invite Erika from, from um, Wiki Movement of Brazil because she has a really special invitation to make to all of you. Um, so Erika, over to you. Thank you so much, Adeli, and I'm thrilled to have you all here and to hear what you have to say. Conspirate with us today. And we'll keep the conversation going at wikidata.com by the end of this month, which is super exciting because it doesn't end here. And for this year, Wiki Movement Brazil is collaborating with Wikimedia Deutschland to organize this biannual conference. I'm not sure if everyone here is familiar with this conference, but it's a very special one in the movement. And this year we are organizing with Wikimedia Deutschland and as it is going to be a remote event, we try to build a process before the conference itself to bring people who usually don't participate in international in-person events such as Wikidata.com. And the conference theme this year is a sustainable future for Wikidata, which we hope will inspire more people from the community to have practical and imaginative discussions around technical infrastructure, data quality, community health, diversity, and a lot of other topics that uh, we have seen today here, actually. So as a preparation for this conference, we've been running a series of discussions and capacity building events, especially for Latin America and the Caribbean. And this event here is supported through this grant that we imagined along this uh, process for the conference. So I would like to invite you all to join a session that we are going to have on the first day of the conference that will be a gathering for everyone that participated in those capacity building and discussion events that we supported for the affiliates and also for the conference itself, obviously. So day one of the conference is a program curated by the program committee. And we are tackling the colonizing Wikidata, of course, we'll have a talk by Anna Suya that is very interesting. And I think that will add to the discussion that we are having here today and a lot of other cool topics that you will be interested, I guess. And for days two and three of the conference, uh, you can submit your proposals. So we can keep 
running this discussion here that we are having and we'll have a specific session for it. It will be clear on the program in a few days, but you can submit other proposals and share your experiences around Wikidata and specific tracks that we built. One of them, for example, is reimagining Wikidata from the margins. Another one is sustainable future. You can talk about glam and education, open science, anyway. So I would like to invite you all to register for Wikidata.com to look at the program and engage with this event because I think it's a huge opportunity to connect with people that are interested in Wikidata and to add to the conversation, right? So I'll send you guys all the necessary links here and feel free to also reach out to me if you have any questions around the process of the conference because I understand that we are doing a lot of things around this conference. It's not just a conference, as I mentioned, it's a process before the event itself. So if, I guess that sometimes it can be a bit confusing, but I'm here to explain uh, anything that you want. And once again, thank you all for being here. It was brilliant. Thank you, thank you, Erica. Um, and I wanted then to also invite um, Sabina and um, yeah, Sabina to speak next um, for our thank you closing. Thank you, Adeli, and thank you to everyone who was there. Thank you so much. I learned tremendously a uh, lot today, and it was brilliant to have you all around. Them. And I'm looking forward to probably continued conversation, the conversation or conversations in different constellations that might bring out, again, different points or ideas or aspects of the tremendously important topic we're discussing today or we have discussed today um so probably see you, some of you at wikidatacon thank you so much again for everything <laughs> yes and uh, i just want to check uh kelly you had your uh hand raised do you want to do you have any comment or it, it was from before i wasn't sure um, yeah, thank you so much. It's a quick comment to add on to Erica's invitation for people to submit um, or attend even uh, the day two track of Wikidatacon, um, which we're hoping to have uh, a quite an open um, continuing on the, from the conversations that we're having today. And the only thing I wanted to say is um, I'm a, a curator of that particular reimagining Wikidata from the margins track. And I wanted to be um, explicit around, we also invite uh, critique or um, um, a, const uh, a more um, uh, critical or not necessarily posit positivist perspectives on how Wikidata is or isn't being used as well. It's very important to um, um, also have space in which to discuss the difficulties. Um, so um, yes, you know, please do tell us about um, exciting uh, projects or maybe even not so exciting projects that you're doing. But also, um, yeah, please do feel free if you have a more critical analysis of Wikidata or broadly speaking, the community, um, you know, we do welcome those conversations as well. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, that's really important to point out. So thank you so much for adding it. Um, and I just wanted to uh, reiterate that we would like to um, have, a, like, get the documentation of this event and create some sort of reporting back to all of you. Um, our fabulous comms team, uh, Claudia and Priscilla, will uh, take care of that. And that's why we have been asking you to make sure that your notes are correctly captured and documented because we would love to put that and maybe it's a blog post, maybe it's a Twitter thread, we don't know yet what that share back will be, but we would like to do so. And we of course send it uh, via the mailing list and the Telegram group. So then you all can take a look and make sure that you are comfortable. Um, if we were going to use the group image uh, or a, a one image of you or a quote, we also will ask for consent prior to any publication. So you don't have to worry that you're gonna 
find this information before you are actually, um, uh, before you give the consent for it. So I just wanted to flag this out because we had questions about documentation and share back. So that those are our plans for it. Um, and now I think I will say thank you again um, um, on behalf of right like um, the, the who's knowledge crew. And I will end. Uh, I will just pass the word to Anasuya, who is actually going to bring the energy um, um, to the room uh, with an, an exercise for our closing. But really, thank you for the amazing contributions and for being here in the multiple ways that you were today. So my request to everybody is that they get up and shake their bodies because part of what we're reminding ourselves is that we are embodied and not just humans at the end of a text, right? Uh, shake whichever way you like, whether you are at your desk or anywhere else. Uh, ah, stretch, take three deep breaths and then for the closing ritual I'm going to be messy and not give you a single structure because I'm going to try and embody what we've been speaking about. What I'd love you to do is to either say one thing one practice you would like to see us do and embody going forward or one action or one emotion that you're feeling. You might be so tired that you can't think of actions or you might be, your head might be buzzing that all you can do is think of all the things that need to be done. We may be in any space between. So I'm actually going to invite you to do either of those things an action or a practice that you want to see us take forward and an, or an emotion that you're holding right now that you want to share with us. And once you begin, I want you to uh, invite someone else who's on this gallery view of yours uh, to speak or um, embody. Um, so I will start and model it. I would love to see us do an entire session that is really on the reimagination and the reimaginings, given all the constraints that we've talked about, but really to push what the reimagining might look like. Um, I would really love to have time and space to do reimagining. Re so that's me, and I am going to ask, um, let me see, uh, Oscar, are you still here? Are you with us, Oscar? Maybe not. I saw him just a minute ago, in which case I will ask uh, Tahani. Tahani, uh, over to you. Hi. Um, and so I now tell you what I would like to do. Collective speculation. That, that's something that I enjoy or collective uh, fabulation. Um, fabulous collective fabulation. <laughs> and if possible, not on a screen, but with people in a, in a space with bodies. Um, I, I pass it on to Mari. Um, I am uh, processing, uh, you know, sort of all the information uh, and also structuring it in my head as well as letting it flow. Um, and I'll pass it on to um, um, Erica. Um, I have this huge feeling of belonging, 
And I know that we are coming from such different places, from such different backgrounds. And I think that this is what really matters in this discussion. And I would really love to see that happening uh, more times and not just be something that we did here today and stopped here. So once again, thank you so much. And I would like to hand away to my friend, Koti. Hola. Bueno, eh, yo la verdad estoy, aparte de cansada, pero muy feliz. Eh, la verdad es que eh, me encanta ver tanta gente de Latinoamérica participando de estas reuniones y particularmente quiero agradecerle a Erika y a Amanda por todo el, el apoyo que nos vienen dando eh, y a todo el equipo de Just Knowledge por organizar este, este encuentro que creo que es el puntapié inicial de un montón de conversaciones que, que nos debemos como región, así que eso, más que nada agradecida. Y le paso la palabra eh, a, eh, vamos a ver, Natalia Carneiro. Está ahí. ahí. Olá, boa tarde, aqui no Brasil já é de tarde. É, eu vou falar de um sentimento, eu estou muito grata por esse momento, por ter aprendido muito com vocês, com todos que compartilharam conteúdo, conhecimento. É, são coisas que eu vou levar para a minha equipe aqui, que trabalha comigo na Casa Sueli Carneiro. Então, muito obrigada por me, a, fazer com que eu adquirisse mais conhecimento. E eu espero estar com vocês muito em breve, em outros momentos. Eu vou passar para a Amanda. Thank you, Natalia. I am going to share a feeling also. I am feeling hopeful and having a Brazilian passport. I've not been hopeful in a long time. And I think we can we can gather and conspire together in doing good things. We we have a great great um, gathering of people here, and I've learned a lot. And thank you so much for letting me be part of this. Please, Sherry, would you uh, share with us? Sí, uh, obrigada, gracias, and. Thank you so very much. This was so amazing. Um, I, uh, Whose Knowledge always puts together fantastic um, presentations, events, and is so organized. And this is just another example of that. Um, I'm very grateful for being able to also meet in the smaller groups as well as the larger ones. And for all the translation that happened, it's very dynamic. And it also, um, I think, allows for greater um, expression. And I'm, I'm hoping that um, in a few months we can um, check in with each other again. Um, uh, and uh, that, those are my thoughts. Uh, how about Asaf? Um, I can only join the appreciation for whose knowledge for uh, bringing together this exceptional group. Um, it's always interesting to me to hear other perspectives. My wish is um, my wish is that we tackle the overwhelming problem space by an equally overwhelming wealth of experimentation. My wish is to see us make progress on many different fronts in many different ways, small and large, bold and conservative, uh, low and high hanging fruit, um, until we, you know, we find the things that stick, we find the models that work for the different uh, use cases and problem spaces. I just want to see a lot more experimentation happening. Uh, over to um Norma Oh Norma is one of our um interpreters. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, let's see. Do you need well, we you need a list? Ask her? <laughs> yes, yes, we definitely can. Over to Manuel. So, um 
I really love the the energy um, here. I really love the different um, perspectives. Um, I really appreciate that um, that a lot. And yeah, I'm also for experimentation. So <laughs> yay, I thought. Um, Alex. Um, thank you. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Um, you expressed in chat, extremely grateful for the invitation um, and the organization from whose knowledge. Um, this is a, a fantastic event and kind of on the theme of spaciousness. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I wish we had more rooms to express spaciousness. Um, um, you know, I think going forward, I mean, it's it's sort of the thing that I think I kind of continue to think about is thinking about how we can architect kind of solidarities between our different organizing, um, you know, collectives and groups. Um, I think you know, analysis is is important and being kind of listening to those analyses and incorporating that into our organizing work, I think is um, really incredibly important. And I think, you know, the more, you know, <laughs> you know, the more and more we are connected, you know, we also highlight kind of where we're not connected. And, you know, I would love to, you know, keep on playing with and understanding kind of different architectures of international solidarity. Um, and so I, I think we you know, need to continue this work and having these conversations and deepening, deepening those connections. Yeah, uh, I'll just pass it to, I'm gonna pass it to Tanique cause she joined late and I wanna put her on the spot. <laughs> I was lurking here and listening. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to put, be put on the spot. Um, I would have put you on the spot if <laughs> I I, I um, Let's see. I'm so happy to be here. I, um, I, I would have loved, I mean, you know, it's kind of, I appreciate that we have all these virtual events because it allows us to connect um, across the globe. Uh, but at the same time, I also miss the, the in-person connection. So as much as I, I can um, connect with everybody here somehow virtually, um, uh, that would be great because I've been learning a lot from listening to everybody. Um, and so that's how I feel in terms of next steps. I really like the reimagining um aspect. So, you know, reimagining together with, with everybody's um, perspectives here uh, would be a great next step. But yeah, thank you so much for putting in this wonderful event um, with so many great people. And I look forward to more. Next person. Um, what about Priscilla Bellini? Thank you. Um, Yes, I will say a feeling of gratitude for being here, for listening to all of you in different languages. That's something I really appreciate. Uh, and to learn from so many of you, uh, I'm very, very grateful. And I will pass on to Claudia, our compañera from uh, Whose Knowledge. Hola, gente. Yo también muy agradecida. Um, eh, muy esperanzada después de todas estas conversaciones eh, y como un siguiente paso me encantaría estar en contacto con todas, todos, todes, compártanos sus proyectos, sus iniciativas, sus ideas, ahí están todos los canales abiertos, está el Telegram, está el mail, así que estemos en contacto y bueno pues encantada de haber conocido, eh, haberles conocido y haber compartido con ustedes. Y voy a pasar a Jani. Um, Hi, guys. Uh, I would like to say that I'm so grateful to be part of this event. So, a special thanks for Erica for inviting me. 
and I would like to think about to us to think about about ways to include minorities at the week, which data, which commons, which media, which media to make uh, knowledge meant spread for the whole world. And I will like to pass the word to Kevin. Thank you, Johnny, and thank you, everybody, for um, I've enjoyed sharing this time with you. So I'm, I'm hugely appreciative of the time that you've all given up for us to have these conversations and this space to think. Um, one thing that I was thinking about as everybody was speaking may seem contradictory, and I was thinking about the necessity of struggle in a journey towards emancipation and also the possibilities of joy in that struggle towards emancipation as well. Um, so I will pass this on to Maya. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm thinking about um, how there is very little structured data about how to negotiate other people's emotions and your own sometimes. Like this language of emotion, you know, co-opted as sort of affective computing or whatever. Um, I'm not thinking about that, but I'm just sort of thinking more about like, it's interesting, we're still struggling often to like understand each other at the most basic level of emotions and um, feelings and affect. And uh, that's a very unformed thought, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. That's all I'm thinking about right now, a field guide to other people's emotions, thank you. Who are you throwing the field guide to, Maya? <laughs> Maybe mostly myself, if I could understand myself. <laughs> first and what I'm feeling. <laughs> Thank you, Anasuya. No, but who are you inviting next? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who am I inviting next? Yes, yeah. Sorry, this tells you how um, tired I am. Um, I would say, okay, Venkat? Is Venkat still here? Hi, thanks, Maya. Thanks for everyone. I think, uh, I think I echo the sense of gratitude, and I always have ever since I come to know the work that Who's Knowledge has done over the many years. So thanks for having me. Um, I suppose uh, the thoughts that I have is perhaps sort of a combination of trying to figure out spaces to build empathy. This is perhaps the key sort of concern and one that I've been thinking a lot more from a technological perspective about how do you, um, how do you build slowness? Uh, how do you incentivize uh, being slow? Um, if, if that's something even something to worth looking for. So those are a couple of things I'm thinking of. Um, I would like with that to hand it over to Dominic. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I would say mixed feelings. It's been a long day. So on the one side, I really feel tired somehow and exhausted. But on the other hand, I'm really excited and, and really curious because I I miss lots, lots of stuff. I'm aware of that, but um, while taking care of some of the Zoom issues, um, there's so much why I'm looking forward to the documentation and having some more time and just, yeah, digesting all, all these thoughts and I'm looking forward to this. So thanks everyone, that was really, a uh, great, great time. So I pass on to Sabina. Hi, so yes, I, I have a little feeling of tiredness as well right now, but at the same time, I'm very grateful. I'm excited. And my wish is really the question of space and time yeah so creating the space to continue quite different of these threads that we unfolded today finding the time maybe even to come together not uh, online but uh, in person and 
taking it from there and then trying out, testing things, just doing it and find out where it takes us. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I guess that is going to happen, I'm sure. Oh, and I'm handing over to, wait, wait, um, Monica. She still there? Monica? No? Aquí estoy. Aquí estoy. Muchas gracias, Sabine. Eh, para mí ha sido un gusto enorme compartir estas horas con ustedes de manera muy especial. Le agradezco a Amanda y a Erika por la invitación, por todo el apoyo. Y esto es eh, solamente el inicio, ¿verdad? Porque realmente ha sido una conversación sumamente esclarecedora y escuchar las voces desde diferentes disciplinas académicas, el diálogo de saberes que siempre enriquece tanto, no solo, no solo eso, sino además desde tantos países y con tantos idiomas. Un pequeño Babel. Muchísimas gracias por todas estas horas compartidas. Y le doy la palabra a, a no sé si estará por allí Martina, Bueno, I think Toma, Lydia, Stacy, Sadiq. Oh, ok. I have Entonces, not spoken yet, Monica. Sí. Ah, oh, ok. Entonces. I guess oh, I... yeah. Ah, ok. Ok, all right. <laughs> thank, thank you, everyone. Uh, it was really inspiring. I learned so much. Um, during the conversation in the breakout rooms and also in the main room. I've learned so much and I've taken notes of most of the discussion that went on. I'm really excited to be part of this conversation and I hope we could um, continue this conversation. Um, there are so much that we need to do and I hope that this conversation continues. Thanks so much and I look forward to meeting you all in person once again. Bye. I nominate Claudia. I think Claudia already went, but I don't think Stacy or Toma or Lydia have gone yet. Lydia. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this was a great event, and I really appreciate the positive and constructive uh, conversations we've had that really help. And yeah, don't let this be the last uh, conversation on this topic. Let's continue it at Wikidatacon. And I will hand over to Stacy. Thanks, Lydia. Um, I also want to express my gratitude. And as we're coming into the end of our time here today, and as it's sort of later afternoon where I am, and I may be a bit tired, uh, I also want to sort of um, talk about, uh, I don't know if it's capacity sharing and solidarity and sort of the space and emotional energy for imagining. So how we create and keep up that, um, I don't even know how to express it, but having that sort of cognitive space for imagining, because I love imagining as a practice, but sometimes it's harder than others to do that imagining. So I wish you all space and time for imagining. That might mean that Toma and then totally forgot. So that's why I see I'm tired. So Toma, <laughs> Toma. Toma can help with thinking about imagining. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you uh, so much. I'm, uh, I'm grateful to, to Sabine. She, she invited me at the last minute, I can say, to, to, to be part of this great conversation. And um, I, because I meet new people, I already met uh, Anasuya before, I think, in, uh, in, in South Africa <laughs> in 1918. But uh, I'm very happy with uh, this uh, South South uh, connection I did today, uh, talking with people from Brazil, since we have some, uh, we have many realities uh, in common. And uh, it is always a pleasure for me to hear uh, some issues you are facing and uh, that I'm also 
facing here in my context. So uh, it was a very rich session for me. Uh, thank you. And I hope that uh, uh, we will continue to, uh, to have such a great discussion around uh, uh, structural data and uh, other issues related to openness and open science. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Thomas. And that leaves my compañera Adeli because I think she forgot to put herself into the list, which <laughs> tends to happen when you're uh, facilitating. So yes. take us out, Amiga, and thank you again to everybody. Yes, yes. I think it was just, uh, I think, again, the feeling of gratitude. It has been such an honor. And uh, I, I have been thinking and sitting with the slowing down, right? And and the model, like whose knowledge we have been saying this for the last weeks, let's keep creating space, right? And so many of you talk about that. Let's create this space and time to reimagine, to be together and to have these conversations and reflections. So let's cre keep creating space. That's it. Thank you. Thank you all. Gracias, obrigada. Thank you all. Thank you particularly obrigada. to our interpreters, interpreters without whom we could yes. not have made this a multilingual conversation. Thank you. Yes. And we will come back to all of you with hopefully some next steps and maybe some reimagining with spaciousness and resources and embodiment. I heard all of those things. So uh, inshallah, everyone. Yes. Um, yes. More, more scheming and dreaming to be done. Yes, bye. bye. Obrigada, bye. obrigada. Gracias. <laughs>